Ladies and gentlemen, we are controversially starting an episode in the middle of the night because we have absolutely no time to waste. <laughs> what we want to do today is focus a lot on the fertilizer, no, not fertilizer, insulation is the word I'm trying to say. Uh, and the reason for that is I know it's winter right now and that by the time we get the project done of insulating all these houses, it probably will not be winter anymore. However, it will still have uh, an impact throughout the year because they will still use uh, firewood throughout other seasons. And then we'll be all prepared for next winter too, which should be really nice. Now we are now, we, like, we have the excavation shed over there and they are going to be producing limestone for us, for example. But we can't really rely on that. We need to do our own work too. So we're going to go and do a bit of mining of limestone to get us started. First up, however, I want to take all the bronze bars that I have and let's take a load of logs. I'm assuming that's the other uh, ingredient in the recipe here. And we're going to make up as many of the uh, bronze pickaxes as we can so that we can go and mine with that. So we're going to be upgrading that now, which is really nice. And uh, there are a load of stone pickaxes, excuse me, pickaxes <laughs> that I've made up. But they can be used by our villagers, so we can use uh, the bronze ones and get the better stuff for ourselves, but our villagers are not going without. Now, I'm assuming um, that once we are able to give our villagers better tools, though we should, because they will be more productive, but uh, it's something we'll worry about in the future. So let's have a look over here, and again, apologies for the darkness, but uh, I need to be productive, especially with my upcoming uh, trip away. So let's buy this. We've got the uh, bronze pickaxe, we're going to buy that, and we're going to craft up all four, so we're using all of our bronze on this because I think it's a really good investment. And there we go, we made them up. It's actually really quick to make them up as well, which is nice. And we'll go put the other stuff away. But essentially, even if we don't use them all now, we will use them in the future for getting things. So what I'm going to do now, I asked in my Discord, and a big thank you to the people in there who, uh, who commented. So there was Nicole and Riot, and uh, I appreciate that. You guys let me know. But basically, there's a couple locations they've suggested that we're going to check out for limestone here on the Oxbow map. So I was just at this first location here looking for limestone, and you've got all these uh, rocks here. And I found this chest, and guys, look at this. We have three iron ore in here, as well as 114 coins. But that is super, super cool. Uh, we don't have uh, much iron at the moment, so it's good to get that. Uh, also, we have this, the wooden shovel, which we just as well take. So yeah, I thought I'd mention that. Nice little bit of loot there for us, and let's keep looking for that limestone. Now, we have to be careful. We just spotted that there's wolves in this area, so... Uh, yeah, I don't want to get too close to them at the moment, of course, but uh, let's just keep looking for our stone and hopefully uh, we'll avoid them, but we'll keep our eyes out for any wolves if they come near. Now, I've got Ryak in my Discord helping me out once again. Uh, I didn't realize it, so I was just going to say rock, and then when we mine it, it should drop limestone. And there we go. Yeah, we got two limestone from that. Well, that's actually been depleted. So yeah, I was looking for limestone for a little bit, and I was like, hold on a second. Maybe it doesn't uh, actually say that. <laughs> so here we go. And we're getting a little bit of limestone. Now, this is not a lot, though. Right, we're getting like two per rock. And like a lot of this is depleting very quickly. Is that just like a little bit in there somewhere? Where is it? It's down here. There we go. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, it's uh, it's going to take a long, long time to get any reasonable limestone from this. And it doesn't even seem to drop every time. We'll do it for a little bit though, and we'll see how we go with it. Um, our durability gets used up pretty quick as well. The tools in this game don't have a ton of durability. So yeah, that's the only difficult thing about this. As you can see, my bronze pickaxe is a little over 50% uh, used up. And in return for that, we got 25. 25 limestone, which, I don't know, that that seems really low to me, given the, the amount that you actually need, uh, as a whole set, you know, to, to actually upgrade buildings. So we'll go back now, we'll see what we can actually do with that 25, um, but I'm not sure that this is the best way. We might be better to just wait for our uh, NPCs to, to get it for us, our villagers. If we go to the map instantly, this is where it was, this location here that I found. There's a lot of rocks and stuff for limestone around there. Um, and I came here because I've got this resource storage nearby because this is mine just here. So I built a resource storage near that mine in the earlier days of uh, this series. So I was like, well, you know, if I do that, then I can, uh, you know, go to the mine, drop things off and keep mining the limestone. But with those sorts of drop rates, I honestly just don't think it's worth it. Let me know your thoughts, though, down in the comments, guys. And also, if you do want to get involved, uh, join my Discord. The link that's in the description. A big thank you there to, uh, we had a few people in the end. There was like Achilles, Nicole, Riot. I'm probably missing some people. Apologies for that. Uh, but as soon as I asked that question, they all commented, which really helped me with this video. So big thank you to them. And if you guys want to come and talk about things that are Medieval Dynasty related or uh, try and find groups for servers and stuff like that, we've got a few people doing that, then uh, yeah, please feel free to join and come and say hello. Okay, guys, can a wolf outrun a donkey? <laughs> We're hoping that uh, the wolf cannot because we've got a few on our tail. Let's find out. Okay, after a bit more running there, it looks like I've lost them. I believe I have. There's a little bit scary for me. I just heard some some snarling. I was like, oh, what's that? But uh, if you're if you're wondering, guys, then yes, your donkey can outrun the wolf, apparently. Uh, so that, that is good to know. Uh, we're going to head back to our town now. What I want to do is just see that 25 limestone that we just got. How does that translate to upgrading a house? I mean, right now we're full and our donkey's full. And I've actually done the upgrade where it gets an extra 10% carry weight for the donkey as well. And so we've literally like filled ourselves up, really, from mining that amount of limestone and used over half a bronze pickaxe. 
but I don't feel like this is going to be even close to like a house's worth, right? So it seems just low, but uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let's go to this stone house over here because not all these houses are stone, of course. So we need to make sure that's the case. And uh, let's right click to do some add insulation. So it's 25 we've got, and it's six per wall. So this does like four walls, basically. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Doesn't seem like a lot, right? I mean, we'll do the three along the front here because uh, that will look quite nice then coming out to the front there. And we'll do one on the side too. But yeah, it just seems like... Anyway, it is what it is. We're going to make the best of it. And we're going to try our best to get all of these houses insulated in today's episode if we can. But uh, let's see how we go. I'll do this wall because this is probably the one I look at most often. What we can do now, though, is start looking at the other type of insulation, which is the uh, daub, right? Because that's what we use for these wooden ones. So let's head up to the barn now, check out the recipe for that, and we can unlock that recipe. I believe in the uh, in the last episode, I mentioned about the fact that we couldn't get our workers making up door because it was locked. And I was like, oh, I don't know how we unlock that. But I'm assuming that it's just because we haven't bought it yet. And once we do that, that'll be done. Uh, some of you probably commented that actually on that last video. Over at the barn now and at the uh, workbench section, you can see we have the door right here, which we can unlock for just 50. So let's do that. And we can craft up, wait, nine? Why is that so low? Oh, it's actually 90, I guess. It's 10 each time. Okay, well, let's craft that up. Then we'll go over to those wooden houses. And I want to see what they look like with the door because I haven't done that yet. And also see how much they take uh, per, you know, wall or whatever so that we can uh, figure out how uh, productive we're being here. Okay, let's start with this wooden house here in the middle and see what we can do. So it takes eight per wall. We've got 90. We can do 10 walls. Uh, do 11 walls, I guess. Uh, so that probably is enough for this whole thing. And that's how that looks. Okay, that's pretty cool. So it just basically fills in the gaps in between the logs. Um, obviously, it's not really meant to be an aesthetical thing, but it is, I think it does look nice, you know, still. But obviously, the, the main point of it isn't that. It's so that it, the houses are more insulated, and we use less of the uh, firewood uh, every season. But especially during the winter, obviously, it will make a big difference. And we can also look if we want to insulate some of the workplaces too. Uh, we'll see how much we're left with and whether or not we want to do that. But the houses is definitely a good one to start with. And now that it's done, this is what it looks like. And we can compare it to the walls up here, which have not yet been done with a door. So that's the sort of difference in how they look. Um, if we go on to our management screen right here, then we can see here that the wood demand right now per each day is 255. And uh, sorry, that's how much wood we have. The demand is 363. So yeah, we don't even have enough for one day right now. What I'm wondering though, actually, so let's see, the demand right now, what did I say it was? 363.1. If we go ahead now and just insulate like one wall, does that actually make a difference? So let's see, we've got enough to do just one wall. Oh, perfectly. We have exactly the right amount, of course. Absolutely uh, uh, plan that, definitely. <laughs> so we do one wall and it goes down to, oh yeah, I was like, that's more, no, 362.6. So each wall seems to bring it down by about three wood per day. So you do 10 woods, that's 30 wood per day or less. And you do 100, it's 300. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I, I see how that, that actually does add up over time and is a good thing for us to be focusing on. So let's go make up a load more daub and keep on doing this. And uh, you've seen the process now and how it looks and stuff. So I'm just going to do a lot of that off camera and then uh, have a look at how it looks once that's all done. Well, I've done my best in terms of the insulation process and uh, we've still got a lot left to do. If we go to management though, you can see the wood demand now per each day uh, is 346. I think it was about 365. So we've got it down by almost 20 firewood per day, which is good, but not great. We're still going to need to do a little bit better. Now, what I'm going to do is go and get some logs and turn that into firewood myself, just to up the sort of uh, amount that we've got to get us through this winter. And in the meantime, we're getting the uh, clay and limestone produced for us. So over time, we'll obviously be able to get a good amount of that. And in fact, let's have a quick look here into the, uh, let's see, it's going to be under the extraction buildings and excavation shed. So the production for that at the moment is all limestone. So maybe we should change that and get some clay out of it too, because the clay is actually really useful um, because the, a lot of the buildings that aren't houses do use the clay. So I still think I want most of it. Uh, oh, we're gonna need to get the shovel. Okay, that's not a problem. Yeah, I still think I want most of it to be the, the limestone, but we can do some, some clay as well. Now what I'll do, I think I've got a shovel on me. So I'll just chuck that in the resource storage while we're up here. And then we can see the actual number that we're gonna get each day. So let's do that real quick. And let's see. Yeah, there we go. Copper shovel. Let's just chuck that in. They can use that one. Waits for that four in the top left there to go down to a three, which it should do once they realize they have that. There we go. And now we can see once again under extraction how much clay we're going to get each day. And it's going to be, uh, oh, there it is. Uh, 50. Oh, wow. That's actually quite a lot, isn't it? 53 per day. So a lot more uh, than the limestone. But I'll, I'll keep it like that because it is going to be useful, as I say, with all those buildings. Uh, what we're going to do now, I'm going to head back to the old town and we're going to take down a couple of buildings. The thing is, under management here, I've got this old house here. This was our first one, which I was going to keep, 
Um, but we're paying tax for it, and it's keeping us like this red thing here, which is just bugging me. I'd rather just take it down, get the resources back, and get rid of that. And the other thing we need to take down is going to be the pigsty right here, because uh, that's obviously an issue. So we're going to go take down those right now, get the resources from them, rather than just leaving them there. Here is the place where our town once proudly stood, guys. Originally, this was where we got started, and as you can see now, there is very little here that is left. We have this resource storage right here. We have up there a uh, not a pigsty, actually, it's the donkey's uh, hut. And also the heart there for the geese and the tree of hope down there of course <laughs> maybe a bit hopeless at this time oh not forgetting russell crow as well now what we're going to do we are going to move the donkeys over to the new town so you can see here that the uh, animal feed that they've got in there is only 16 percent, so that will soon be used up and then we can destroy this building and get rid of them which would be good and then we have the geese over here and the geese have 27 percent, so it's gonna be a little bit longer they also have a ton of stuff here that we uh, need to collect, actually, which I'll do in a second off camera. We'll put it all into the resource storage. And once those two buildings have been moved over to the new town, we can then obviously take them down and then take this resource storage down as well. Because at the moment it's here so that as we take stuff down, we can just like fill up this chest and obviously all the resource storages connect up. So that works quite well. Um, I was wondering then for a second whether those sacks actually open. I thought they were just um, decorational and they are. But yeah, just checking that. So anyway, that's the plan. Just keeping you posted along the way. Um, we're just going to go over now and find a good spot to build the new donkey hut. And then as soon as that hut, uh, the, the current hut, I should say, you know, depletes of all of its animal feed, then they will be moved over. Back at the new town now, and I've come up with an idea for the donkey shelter. If we go to the uh, farming technology section here, you'll see if I scroll down, we're pretty close. We're, we're closing in on the stables. So this is something we could build soon. And I thought we could connect them up a little bit. I think donkeys and horses are good friends. Uh, certainly in this series, they're going to be. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so let's see. There's the donkey shelter right there. So what I think I want to do is give a bit of space behind the back of this thing. So if we place it like there, that's kind of cool. So it's facing down this way. Yeah. Oh, actually. Oh, actually, I might have another plan. Hold on. Let me let me destroy that. And then uh, I'll talk to you through my new plan. Okay, so what I'm thinking, the donkeys really only use, if we look at it this way, the left hand side of that, right, they go in and out there. The right hand side is more like where the workers come in and out of. So I've got a cool idea. We're going to put it like this way round. Yeah, that's cool. Now, let's see. We don't want it too close to the pigsty. So it's come a good ways back here like this. Boom, like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build a fence for this. But what we'll do with the fence, and in fact, I can probably show you this. Let's get our hammer um, back out. So, yeah, yep, okay. Uh, trying to do too many things at once is never a good idea for me. Uh, let's just grab any fence for now. It won't necessarily be this fence. But we can build the fence like this, right? So it will separate the bit where the donkeys go in over there from where the workers come in to access them and do that sort of stuff. Then what we could do is we can have a little road here. We can connect this road down this way, right, to connect up with these, and, and they'll go off and do their thing. And actually, that means we, we're actually going to move this donkey shelter in a minute back here, right? So, because uh, I, I was leaving space behind for the fence, but we don't need to do that anymore. The donkeys will come out and whatever, and then this here will be their field that will all be fenced in. And down here, we're going to put the stables for the horses. So that way, the donkeys and horses can share one big enclosure, because as I said, they're, they're going to be friends. That's the plan. <laughs> and uh, I think it will be a nice way of doing it. So hopefully you guys agree. I'm going to do that right now. Again, we have built one of these before. I won't uh, time lapse this. We'll just go and build it, and then I'll show you the finished thing once we get there. I'm just looking at the uh, fence types here. I wanted to bring you guys back in. If we go to fences, I think, uh, let's see, it's going to be a log fence is going to be the best, because if we go for plank, there are some really nice ones, but they don't really look that horsey to me. They look more like residential. Uh, also, planks are a bit more expensive than the logs, right? So this one right here, the log split rail fence, that's really cool as is that one there, the log crossbuck. Now, they both take four wood to make, so it really doesn't matter which one we use, technically. Uh, I'm thinking maybe if we go for the crossbuck for these, and this one here we could say for the cows, because I want to do different fence for different things. That, to me, it was more cowy, sort of sheepy, and that one there might be a crossbuck. You know what, let me do some Googling. Okay, these are the images I found when Googling, uh, so we have to go for this one, right? <laughs> Apparently, this one's more authentic, and we'll do that one for the cows or something like that. So let's do that. Let's buy that one right there, and let's select it, and we're going to start getting it placed down. So this is what I was talking about. The workers were walking here. This is where the horses come to. So what we want to do now is place this down. Oh, that is nice looking, that's for sure. Now, the path comes here, but we don't we don't want to go crazy with this enclosure. This path is going to curve down this way, closer to it anyway. So I think what we'll do is let's go about maybe that far out should be fine. Right, I, maybe a little bit less. I just, I really don't want to go crazy with this. Now, going down this way, we are going to have to go a bit further because the stable's got to fit in here. And I'm not sure how big the stable's is yet because I can't actually sort of, you know, make it yet. Uh, and I'm thinking now as I'm talking... Actually, we want to get to a point where we can make the stables because it might have a similar sort of thing 
where we can put the, the logs like this, right, connecting up at the halfway point, splitting the horses and workers. So that's what we're going to do, change of plan, but at least you guys have seen now the fence that we're going to make and how we're going to do this. So that's how it's going to work once we get to that point. All we're waiting for now is the donkeys at the last place to eat up the rest of the animal feed, then we'll move them over, and I'll also start moving this path and stuff like that, and that's going to be pretty good. A couple of episodes ago, you'll remember we got into the farming side of things, and I had an awesome comment here from Nicole, which said about how we can rename fields. So what we can do is like we can look at this field right here, field three, rye. Then when we go into management, go to the field section, field three right there, we just press H, then we can name it ourselves, call it rye, and then forever we'll know what's what. So I'm just going to go around and do this for each of the fields. I wanted to mention that, oh, we have an unknown field or an unsown field. Oh, okay, so these ones that are unsown aren't going to tell us what's what. We'll have to just do it by the icons. I find it easier doing this because if we go to this next field here, like field one we now know is wheat, right? So we can do that. Uh, there we go, there's wheat. It's a little bit harder to see what some of the fields are. Now, field two is easy enough. We can see that's definitely cabbage. So we'll rename that one to cabbage. There we go. And the other one then, we've got wheat, rye, cabbage. So that there is going to have to be oats. We know that just because that's the only other crop that we planted. So process of elimination. But I don't know if it's just me. I find it hard to recognize like what some of these are. Like that's obviously carrots. That's obviously cabbage. But some of these ones here, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But thank you, Nicole. Great little comment there. And uh, it's good to have that done. Just a little bit more organized now. Now, in order to be able to build the stable, we do have to unlock it. So in order to do that, we have to get farming points. We're at 1885 right now. And if we go down here, you see that the stable there is at 2000, which I'm really looking forward to having. And so we're going to try and do that. And I've just made this massive field here because we have to do farming stuff in order for that to happen. So let's actually uh, check something out together. So right now, farming is 1,885.5. If we grab up just one little spot here, it goes to 1,885.7. Okay, so we get 0.2 for each one. So by the time that we do all this hoeing and a bit of fertilizing stuff, hopefully uh, we'll get to a point where we can just then destroy the field. I know this is like technically a little bit of a waste. We could have made a field somewhere else, but I'm really focused at the moment on getting into the like town development, town planning side of things. So I'm trying to build buildings now that are going to stay there permanently. And I know the stables is going to be a fundamental part of the new town. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I know, yeah, not the most efficient necessarily, but uh, hopefully it'd be pretty cool to unlock those stables and build them. Hopefully you guys agree. Let's get on with this and see how much we have to do before we can actually get to the point where we can build those stables. We have now hoed that entire field. Took a little bit of time. You can see it's coming on for morning now. And in farming, we're up to 1930. So not great. Like we're not quite there yet. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fertilize this entire thing. We are in winter right now, which means the next month is going to be spring. During spring, we can plant flax. Now, if we plant that all as flax, it's going to be a pretty good harvest. And it will give our uh, sewing workshop person something to get on with. So that's what I'm going to look to do. So we're just getting uh, the, the bags and the fertilizer and stuff now. And that's going to be the plan, just keeping you guys updated as we go through. Now, just out of interest, I want to see here when we use the fertilizer, how much we go up each time. So on farming right now, we're 100, uh, sorry, 1,934.6. If we fertilize just one square, let's see that changes to 1,934, yeah, 0.8. Okay, so it is 0.2 for each one. Just the same as it was before when we did the uh, hoeing of all this land to turn it into a field. So we get to place all this down, which will get our points closer to 2000 again. Then we have to hoe it all, right, to get it all ready because it's unplowed right now. So that's what we'll do with the next hoeing. And then uh, plant it all and eventually harvest it all. So that whole process will definitely get us above 2000. We might even get above 2000 uh, without needing to do any harvesting at all. But we'll still have to wait. Uh, and the reason for that is because this field here, I built it in such a way where it's coming down to where the enclosure will go for the horses. Um, just because it's only like a temporary structure, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to destroy it at the end anyway. Uh, but that will allow us to get there. So I'm going to keep doing this. As you can see, this is uh, going to take me quite a while. <laughs> and then we'll uh, see how many points we're on when this is done. Something quite funny and unexpected just happened. I was going about my business fertilizing the field. And this guy's here. <laughs> he's coming around behind me. And he's plowing because he thinks he's helping. And I appreciate that, mate. But actually, we want to do this ourselves because we need the points. So let's see if we can stop him from doing that. If we go to fields, let's see here. Uh, field five, this must be the one. How do I make it so that no one works on this? Like, I just, I don't want you to work this one. Let me see. Maybe if I go to the farmer's shed, it's done through there. Let's see. Farm shed. And we go to tasks, maybe? No? Oh, dear. Uh, is there a way I can stop him or not? Okay, the only thing I can think of right now is, Bronisad, we're going to remove you so you're not a farmer right now. So there we go. He's going to be out of work for a while. Um, there, there might be a different way of doing it. I just I couldn't like see one, and uh, I was just like, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. It's only going to be a temporary measure. 
But yeah, quite funny. He's, he thought he was helping bless him, but we need him to not do that. So uh, he's just cost us some points there. If that ends up being the difference between me not being able to make a stable, boy, would I be mad at him. But uh, anyway, we're going to carry on with this. Uh, we see we're almost out of fertilizer here. I have to keep making more of that up. Actually, you know, I, I wonder something. I wonder, does making the fertilizer... That's probably not a farming activity, is it? It's probably a production activity. I will answer that question for you guys in case you're wondering too. Let me just do this last little bit and then we'll see. Okay, so over at the barn right here, you see there we can make up the fertilizer. We've got a ton of manure. Uh, actually, before I do that, I should probably check something. So our building technology is not going to be affected. Our farming is 1963.5. Our production, 592. Let's craft all this up and see which one gets the benefit of it. I'm assuming production, but it's always good to have a look. Okay, so production actually seems the same. Uh, farming, did farming go up? I think it did. Yeah, it was 1963, right? And that was 1967. Okay, that's good to know. So actually just even just making it, this uh, fertilizer gets our farming up. I'm glad that is the case because obviously that's what we're trying to do. Uh, but it does uh, surprise me a little bit. But uh, there we go. Anyway, back to the grind. Just thought I'd keep you guys updated along the way. Things are coming along really nicely. We've got here the farm now all planted. And I just had a look over at the pigs here. And as you can see, we've got all adults over here. So that's pretty cool. But I think it might be time to sell a few of these pigs because we can get decent money for them. And then it frees up the ability to have piglets growing once again. So if we go into management here and look at the animals and the pigs, let's see like how much are they actually worth. So these are all 225, are they? Okay, cool. And this is their different ages. Now, these two here have been named after people, so I wouldn't feel good about selling those. So instead of that, we're just going to sell these ones down here. So let's hold down X, sell you, 225, do the same with you. So we're going to get, what, like 675 coins out of selling these three pigs, and they are now all gone. Keep with our original ones. One thing I actually should have checked before I did this, but I think we're going to be fine, is the pigs right here. Is it F to open details? Yeah. So their lifespan right there is 18, almost 19 years, and they're only five. So they will have plenty more piglets before they die, which is great. Um, but obviously, yeah, we should have checked that first because we don't want them to die and then we have to buy more. But that's pretty good. So we're just like free money, basically. And talking of money, we're on 56, 56.6. <laughs> that's a nice number. And what we're going to do now is head into the town and pay our taxes. Now, I am aware that we can send wifey off to pay the taxes. Um, but there are a couple of other things I want to do in the town after some comments I received uh, a couple episodes ago from people. Um, excuse me, this is my Claude. Get your own Claude. Damn peasants. <laughs> and uh, so while we're in the town, we're going to take a look at a couple other things. I'll ride up there now and then uh, we'll have a look when we're there. So I got this comment from Dwayne John and uh, it's something I completely forgot about, guys. We had the bank account and you can tell I've forgotten. I can't even remember exactly where it is. But so those of you who are watching this series from the start... You'll remember the bank account, and here it is. It's this chest over here, isn't it? Where we just like stored a load of stuff. And he's like, yeah, you should check this one out. And I'm like, yeah, I definitely should. It's been ages. Look at all this stuff that we have here. This is just free stuff. All of this stuff that we haven't used. Burn note, what is, that's a quest item. Okay, well, yeah, let's just take it. Let's take all of it, right? Let's get all this out of here now. We're depleting our bank account because we no longer need it. And uh, it served us well, but it's it's definitely time. Now, I had another comment from Sylvan Dryad, who uh, is uh, a long-time commenter on the channel. And uh, thank you for this comment. Apparently, we can get up into the attic in this building here, and there's an axe up here. Now, how do we get up there? So we need to go to the table beside the curtain and jump up onto it, apparently. Oh, actually, wait, wait, wait. This is the house we spawned in, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so let's come inside here. I was in the wrong house. Right, table by the curtain, I guess, is, is this, maybe? And then... Okay. Let me play around with this and see if I can get it right. Okay, so I think what we have to do is jump onto this table here by the curtains. We go there, then jump up here. But like, we can't do that because that's in the way. That's the bit I don't understand. Unless we're supposed to jump up on there. Oh my goodness, guys, here we are. There is a load of loot up here. And oh my goodness, look at this. We just got some olive oil. Um, there's a potion of weight, potion of instant healing, stamina. What else have we got here? There's a potion of uh, it's more instant healing. Oh, this is finicky to, to get it. There. There we go. And uh, is that some more stuff there we can take? Let's see. Uh, another potion of weight and a potion of stamina. All these potions. Okay. And there's a bronze axe up here as well. This isn't stealing as well. This is just like our stuff if we want it. There's like really nice little surprise that we have all this up here. That's so cool. Thank you, Sylvan, for that comment. Um, I'll show you guys how I got up. It took me a little bit of time. So this is the house, right? This is the table right here. Jump up onto that. Then we want to jump up onto this shelf. I found this to be the easiest way. So we get up like that. Hang on. Yeah, like on here. Then jump up onto the table there, and then you can jump up into here. So it's a little bit finicky to do. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything like I usually do, but I think that is it. 
But that is super, super cool. So thank you for the comment. And there you go, guys. If you didn't know about this, you do now. <laughs> of course, we are here to pay the taxes. So let's see where we need to go for that. Where is Miragold? And he's just over here, apparently. So that's nice and easy. There he is. So, hey, dude. Um, oh, actually, oh, actually, we have to do it now. Um, so we've paid our taxes. I'm not sure how much they were. Let's see. We're on 3,000. I think they were basically around 2,500 coins, which I'm actually pretty pleased with. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than that. So, uh, yeah, that's actually pretty good, believe it or not. And obviously, they're going to keep going up year on year. But um, we are hopefully going to make more money as well. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, let's go back to the town now and try and fix those two red things in the top corner and get on with something else while we're waiting for that field to grow before we can do the horses. I noticed this video is starting to go on a little bit longer than I planned. So what I'm going to do is actually end the video there. And in the next episode, that's when we're going to make the uh, or go get the horses, basically make the stable and get horses in, which I'm super excited about. As always, guys, thank you so much for all the support on this series, all the subs and comments and all the rest of it. I do really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.